Penny here with Gardening Simplified. It's December 1st and we're going to do a full garden tour today. We're going to start out here in the main garden uh, or no dig plot. And uh, today it started out kind of cool, 36. Of course, it didn't take long. We had to get the greenhouse open, partially anyway, that way, uh, keep the temperature down. But anyway, we're up here. We've got a few weeds in our uh, collards. They're not growing too much with the cool weather. These two rows here where we pulled up our potatoes, uh, we've got to get these planted. The early peas, uh, they're slowly growing, but they're probably not going to make any peas, but we're not going to take them out. We're going to give them a chance. Now, right here is one of our uh, leeks. Now, all the leeks that we have planted, except for the bed that I'll show in a little bit that's just about finished, are all the same age. They've all been planted at the same time. But you see that they're different in size. Now, this here is our bed of green onions. And down here below the leek, we, we're going to have to fill in a few spots that Cole got some. Uh, we've got some red cabbage here. I've got a few uh, transplants left. And then we've got some uh, lots and lot of kale down there. Now these leeks here in this bed were planted in their cell trays exactly the same time as those leeks. And let's just zoom in here a little bit more. But as you can see, these are uh, much, much smaller than these ones over here. And that's one of those things I always say that a plant wants to get in the ground. So a lot of you, you might be used to buying your transplants from a nursery or somewhere, a uh, feed store, different things like that. And they're nice big transplants, but realize when you grow your own from seed, uh, don't wait till they get that big. Go ahead and get them into the ground because they're gonna really love being in that soil and they're gonna do so much better. Now we have a, a few cabbages here. It's kind of hard for me to tell which variety, but I think these are early Jersey. It could be something else, but because the point on the top, that's uh, one of the uh, things. Now they could be, a lot of these are round, so they could be uh, a different variety. But anyway, we've got our sweet onions over here. They're doing good. And our cabbages, which they're heading up good. Our beets are, are looking real good. They're starting to, to form beets on some of these. Uh, they're not real big yet, but they maybe they'll do good and maybe the bugs won't affect them too bad. Our broccoli, if we go down here, and I was looking earlier, uh, man, this one ain't real big, but you can see they're starting to uh, form their heads down in there. Won't be, won't be long. Uh, we'll have some nice big uh, broccoli heads. The golden beets, they're they're the same way. They're starting to to form little beets in there. Now the ones that I've watered down, if you seen my freeze uh, deal, some of these are are doing good. They're they're. Uh, Forming their beets. They're trying to bring out some new green growth, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, our deal, which it got hit pretty hard, I've been uh, trimming off a lot of the the brown, so we can, the green will be there to be easier to harvest uh, for the market. Now these are uh, these leeks here were. Uh, these were planted some months ago. This is the last of this bed, and we'll harvest them out tomorrow uh, and put something else in this bed. The uh, asparagus, it's getting about time to to cut all these back. Uh, maybe dress them with some more compost and, and fertilize them. I normally use some organic fertilizer. I, I kind of like to wait till January. Uh, but we might do it a little bit earlier. Now we've got 
And this is something you need to pay attention to. I'm sure it's warm up underneath here. Uh, you, When you cover something like we co cover this rosemary, you want to make sure that you uncover it once it warms up because it'll build up a lot of heat in that under that cover. Our uh, chives here, they're looking mighty rough. Uh, cold weather. Now in this gr little greenhouse, which this was our first one, uh, it's looking pretty good. We've got our celery going, and it seems like the celery's doing a little bit better over on this side than it is on this side, but not not a whole lot, but a little bit. Now we've got a lot of uh, Chinese cabbage in here. Uh, got it going. Uh, we've got plenty of starts. Some of these are definitely needing to get out. We need to get this fennel in the ground. It'll grow a whole lot faster once it's in the ground. These collards are definitely time in this early Jersey uh, cabbage. And we need to get this new batch of cilantro out. Now, this tray here didn't look like it had very good germination. I don't know what it is on my romaine seed. It must be old. And my bok choy in this one certainly was uh, a real leggy, even though it's been out here. Now, I've got another uh, bunch of uh, onions and leek going. Now, these these here uh, will be for extended crop. Now, I try to grow leek where I grow it year-round. And that's why when I put it in the ground, I put it in different stages. That way it's different sizes. But I've got some crystal wax and some uh, white grano onions. So I have some white onions to maybe have a later crop. We've got some more beets that need to go out. I normally put them out when they're about this size. It's a ideal once or maybe just a little bit bigger. But when, when they get too big, they start trying to get tangled up. And these other ones here, they'll, they'll need a little bit more time in the greenhouse. Around in the other greenhouse over here, uh, we've got some of our lettuce going. Need to get in here and water this morning. Uh, it's a muscalin mix, which is a good variety of different greens and lettuces. Uh, this row just been put in. It's got a musculine mix for a big part of it, and then it's got some uh, endive and some arugula down there. Now, we've got this bed we're fixing to plant. Well, I think we'll plant carrots again this year. We have some bok choy. Now, we'll start harvesting this out uh, this week and take some to the market. Uh, it doesn't take long. If it starts getting hot, it's it's going to bolt. I think pak choy is worse than that for me, but bok choy is pretty bad. I did get my pineapples moved up to two-gallon pots, so hopefully they'll do better. Uh, I might end up with my rhubarb. I've got it here in the greenhouse. Well, I've got a thing in that. I want to see if the the leaves start, or the roots start coming out the bottom. I, I like to put them in a bigger pot. In our mango tree, now it's doing pretty good. The little one, it's it's still littler. The big one, it's it's bigger. And we've got all our citrus trees. Uh, they're most of them's looking pretty good. We've been uh, I've been kind of watching over them. I've been moving some up to the bigger pots. We've got uh, more room for when our figs start uh, coming in. Now we did have, uh, we've got two little persimmon trees that was grown from seed. And then we've got this one uh, black mission fig. This one that already rooted out, so it got potted up. I'm going to move this out and get a little more sun so it's not shaded quite so much. But we're, uh, they're doing pretty good. We've got some of our other citrus there. Now we're starting to ripen up on some. Our orange is just now 
starting to turn so won't be long on our our oranges there and our, it's, which is a satsuma now this this Meyer lemon here is just almost ripe uh, Meyer lemons tend to get a little bit they'll turn yellow and then they'll get a little orange to them so it won't be long it should be in pretty good shape and of course here's our uh second a batch of cilantro it's it's doing pretty good it's won't be long it'll be ready for harvesting back here beside the greenhouse we've got a we've got our oregano now we we're waiting our freeze dryers on the way back uh and i'll do a separate video on that it's been repaired quite a few times the uh this oregano is uh, true Greek. It's supposed to be a little stronger. I've got to come in here and uh, redo these beds, which I'll do here pretty soon. But we want to harvest this oregano, and then I can split it up and put it in multiple uh, containers. But I do want to fill them back up to the top so, so they'll be ready. And, and, of course, they'll settle down through the year. Uh, if you remember, whenever I set these up... They were full to the top. Now they're down about six inches. Over here, we've taken out our sweet peppers that were in this row. Uh, got it cleaned up. Now we've got our other onions over here. They're doing pretty good. They're just, just barely, so they, they're not too much of them in the shade from the greenhouse, which works out good. Our elephant garlic over here, it is uh, doing fantastic. It's, uh, I'm, I don't know if I could say 100% germination because occasionally, like right here, we'll miss, miss one, but we have su super good germination and it's really doing a uh, good job of growing. Now, some of our other herbs, uh, which this, the sage, we've, we've harvested this uh, earlier and then once it freezes, it's, it's kind of gets a problem where it's, uh, uh, end of its leaves gets get burnt they'll kind of curl and they'll get dried and burnt so we we got in in time uh, catnip now if you ever grew catnip <laughs> and the cat will come in here and crawl up under there occasionally it likes it but it goes wild it's that's one reason that it's important for a lot of these herbs to be in uh, baskets now our, our hyssop is still hanging in, our lavender, it's it's doing good. Now right here, this is uh, our turmeric. And and uh, it's just now, it's got to the stage to where it's ready to harvest. It's it's froze, it's, it's tops drop back. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to come in here in the next few days and we're going to harvest out some of this. Now we have... Some cabbages here, which really sad cabbages. Uh, our radicchio. Now the the cold in my watering got it pretty rough, but it is coming back, so so it should do pretty good. I just need to keep the water to it. It's going to have a rougher time because it is shaded from the greenhouse for for a good part of its day. Uh, it does get light, uh, but it would do better if it's in full sun. Our little carrots, they're doing pretty good. Our uh, turnips and mustard, they don't look real good. Uh, they, they've they still got, uh, got to be pulled out and some more planted. And look like one of our peppers has got over here on our garlic. Here's our other garlic. And uh, this is a, another batch of uh, leek. Now this was, I think, the the fourth or the third batch out of that same thing that was was planted so it's it's not as the the other bigger one up front was the second batch put in the ground and we got to get the rest of these peppers out and need to get some rows planted uh, we have a few strawberries left, but we aren't really messing with them. Uh, 
these apple trees. Now I'd have to look back to see what age, but I'm thinking maybe they're three year old now. These were grown from seed. So hopefully maybe if we get lucky, these will uh, go ahead and, and bloom this year. Maybe see if it sets an apple. But these rows here aren't planted except this one. This one has radishes, a couple different types. And then we have this this row is uh well one of them's mustard one of them's uh turnips and it's easy to tell once they get just a little bit bigger on their leaves you can see the remnants of the stumps from the okra that was down here i just leave them eventually they'll get to where they'll they'll rot the roots loose and then the top part i just take out I've got to clean out this this row. Uh, it was uh, cilantro, but now it's coriander. It's and it, you can call it either way, but I start saying it's coriander when it starts seeding and it's sending up seed tops now. As we go up, now we did have. This row was all the way planted. Uh, the freeze got it. And this row was all the way planted. Uh, you can see some of the, uh, it's either a Napa or a uh, Chinese cabbage there. It survived. But, but the rest didn't. It didn't come back and plant. Now I had... Uh, cleaned out here too and I did a video uh, I was uh, saving seeds off my my uh, echinacea and then I noticed that that my uh, chamomile uh, that had seeded is coming back so I started pulling them up but then I realized what I was doing now these here it's a few white onions here and then these these are red onions that's down here, they're still doing good. It's about time I'm gonna shoot them with some more fertilizer. Even though it's winter, they like it and they'll grow. Uh, this is where my uh, elephant garlic is. The grow, growing these from nodules and then there's a bunch of nodules that's planted down here uh, in this row. And then uh, this here, is another uh, bunch of leek. Like I say, all these are, they're different sizes, but they were planted at different times. And then we've got uh, more onions down there. Right here, and normally I don't film a bunch of the mess intentionally, but right here we had a clump of trees and this shaded uh, this part of the garden uh, quite a bit, especially in the, the uh, winter time with the uh, winter equinox because the sun is so far south that they just they really shaded this area but what we're planning to do is we had to come in and repair electric wire because we knew we were going to take it out with the roots uh, when we dug these out so we fixed that but we're going to move our uh, extra iron and stuff that we have on our racks we're going to move it to a different location and run our fence over and we're going to take this area in as as part of the garden now we're in the workshop area we've just got our our one uh grow station here that that's in the climate controlled area and as you can see we've got uh, quite a few things there we've got a whole bunch of uh of fig trees some are doing real well. They're starting to put out their their leaves. Now, a lot of people don't run them under grow lights. I, I do whenever I set these up. I've got a heat mat underneath them, uh, and I'll get them to uh, taking off really quick. I've, all the time, I've got uh, new seeds propagating here, and the reason for this is in wintertime, there's a lot of things that you can grow, and I have a lot of beds that are empty. So I want to get these filled up, uh, get stuff in them before uh, waiting too late. Because if I wait too late, then I'm going to have 
uh, crops that I'm going to have to take out because I'll need to put in my spring crop. So, so we want to kind of grow them pretty quick. Uh, still nothing from, of course, it's only been a couple of days uh, from our pomegranate seeds. It was uh, germinating. And here we are. We rode down to our uh, lower garden spot. This is where we've got our uh, green manure or elbon rye, in fact. And rain for a few days. Of course, it's rooted in there good and it's kind of moist, but I might hit it with some water uh, get it going. But uh, it's looking good. And right over here from this uh, area, uh, you can see we've got a bunch of trees. Now, we had, whenever we had rented a backhoe, we came in here and we pushed out some of these trees. What we're going to do is extend this up. Now, that area has a lot of nut grass and it's down, kind of downhill from here. Uh, but I think we're going to start tilling this and uh, maybe do a little bit more gardening up this way. Uh, we might turn into that lower spot, maybe turn it into uh, an area for more fig trees or something like that. But anyway, we've got a lot of uh, cleaning up to do. And this is our other garden spot. Now, I hope this wind isn't uh, messing up too much with the microphone. Uh, this garden spot, of course, we got one fence to take back down because uh, we don't have a deer problem like we did with gg around she kind of keeps them i guess in the neighbor's dogs but we had taken out some trees right here kind of pushed it back there and uh also uh at the end of the garden down there uh we had taken out uh some more trees and uh the thing with that is uh in the morning time and that is actually the east is over there so when the sun come up it kept sun off of this area quite a bit so we took two trees off on that end and we had a clump of trees here uh we're probably going to end up uh maybe expanding this just a little bit but it'll make it easier it and especially this time of year you can see it's a little shaded in the middle from these other trees well, these trees at this end really did a lot of shading. So uh, when you start planting early, it creates situation. But in this garden spot, now we do have a few rows planted. Now there are a few weeds in here, uh, but you can look down and you can kind of see uh, the green uh, in the rows. And what that is, is these are little carrots that are... Uh, Coming up, I have three varieties. Now, these were planted uh, uh, about a month ago. Well, a little over a month ago, the 20, 24th of October. Now, carrots are normally, a lot of them say it takes about uh, 65, 70 days for carrots. Now, if you're planting them in the wintertime, you can double that. So it takes about four months uh, to get carrots up in, in the wintertime. Of course, it's well worth it because carrots are sweeter in the winter time. So anyway, and, and we composted this side. Uh, well, in here too, we took our compost when we moved it from the bin. Now I've got some kind of uh, weeds coming up in there, but uh, this this compost we went ahead and tilled it in. Some of it was not really compost, but by springtime it'll really be good for for the soil. And down here, now this is my uh, Roselle hibiscus. Now, I don't know how many of you grow Roselle hibiscus, and you can see the the flowers. They were just getting ready to bloom. What happened was I had started some seed. They didn't germinate, so I got some more seed. And I was about a month and a half at least behind on getting my uh, transplants ready. And what happened was... Uh, they just started blooming and the freeze come along. And I had planted me a whole lot more this year because I really enjoyed it and, and a lot of the people at the market enjoyed it whenever I uh, bring uh, the dried calyxes. And I didn't get any. I know. 
shed a tear for me. But anyway, I know this next year I'll make sure I get my my uh, plants started earlier and get it started. But you can see these these things grow kind of massive. They, well, they're in the okra family, so they grow kind of massive. They they put up a big uh, bottom or trunk to them. Sometimes uh, I know one last year was probably about five inches in diameter, maybe a little bigger. Uh, but they they don't have a real strong root system. That's why they're all kind of laying over. We have uh, when it rains some and then the wind blows, it it just kind of uh, blows them down a lot of them, which doesn't matter. They they still produce just as good. Uh, but anyway, that's that's that. Down here, our fig trees are going dormant. Now I've cut uh, some cuttings off of some of these, and I'm thinking about today coming in here and getting a few more. Even though I've got quite a few, it's not going to hurt to have extra. But it, everything's kind of uh, dormant down in this part. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tour. If you want to see more, of course, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe. Uh, hit the bell so you'll be notified. Give it a big thumbs up and enjoy your garden.